white kind of items, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Is it first come, first mm -hmm. serve? Um, I don't think so. I think everyone can find because they have, I think they have enough employees to just like keep circulating with all the people. Wow. But I know first, I think it's first 50 get a free t-shirt. Oh, did you guys hear that? Free t-shirt. Free t-shirt. Are you ready for us? I think I think Gabby's ready for us. Are we ready for us? So I, as well as many of you in here, um, I have experienced, according to the polls that I took, have experienced bullying. You've been teased for maybe something that you couldn't control, like your maybe ethnicity, your religion, your sexuality, something that was out of your control, and you were teased for that. And um, that's something that I have a passion for over the past couple of years. I've been a, a big advocate for anti-bullying and making sure that we address the biases and the prejudices that are happening. And in the same poll that I took, I asked, are we living in a post racial society? And around 6% of you in this class said that we were. And I can only think to attribute that to maybe the fact that we have an African-American president or that our schools are no longer segregated and that America is probably one of the, is the most diverse nation on the planet. Um, but at the same time, when the MSNBC is putting out studies saying that over 500,000 students and over 1,600 schools are reporting to be severely bullied three or four times a month, or when the FBI is putting out studies saying that 6,628 crimes that they report each year are based off bias and hate for another group, hate crimes. Um, there's no way that I can think that we're living in a post-racial society, and especially not when just two weeks ago um, at the Shell gas station, we heard in Jacksonville that there was a hanging of President Obama on a noose. So there are definitely some um, negative and hateful stereotypes and attitudes that are still being perpetuated in our society. And that's why I stand before you this afternoon to really talk about what we can do um, as a, a generation that has a big influence in this. Now, for like I told you the past couple years, this has been my passion point. Um, I was a title holder for the Miss Maryland pageant in 2011, Miss Montgomery County, and my platform was eliminating hate, bias, and prejudice in the community. And one of the experiences that I had um, support from was the Anti-Defamation League. In 2010, I was their youth leader. Um, and Anti-Defamation League, again, you guys didn't know what that was, so it's, it started out as an anti-Semitic protest group after the Holocaust to bring justice to um, people that were, I guess, being stereotyped against and hateful crimes. So they, they lobby on Washington, and they really want to get this message out about awareness and what we can do to stop this perpetuation of, of stereotypes. And so the pyramid of hate here is a very useful tool that I gained at this youth leadership conference. And it's something that I just strive to, I, I live by. Um, it starts off with our attitudes, and I think this is something that's so simple that we just graze right over. We may not even understand or know that we're, we have some of these attitudes. When you see someone, and you don't know about them, they come in, you don't understand why they dress like that, why they talk like that, why they look like that, why they do what they do. So naturally, you either avoid them, you don't understand, so when people tell jokes, you don't say anything about it because you don't know too much about them. You just let it happen. You're a bystander. Um, and then these attitudes, you don't know, and that becomes your truth because you don't know, and you stick with people that you do know, that's damaging. And people don't know that, that it's damaging. And so those attitudes then become acts. And those little acts, they're not directly damaging, but name-calling. Instead of now being the one in the circle hearing the jokes, you're now the one telling the jokes. And that, you know, you socially avoid them, exclusion and ridicule. And it just becomes a snowball effect. Then it gets into discrimination in the workforce and discrimination in the schools, like we saw with bullying. And then it gets worse and worse to threats, assaults, terrorism, murder, arson, desecration, and then genocide. That's basically when the Anti-Defamation League was forming this, they had this with the Holocaust in mind, but this is really applicable to every facet of life. Um, my mom is the Global Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for the Society of Human Resource Management, and she spent over 20 years of her life traveling to different organizations to tell them about why diversity and inclusion is so important in the workforce. Because over $440 million each year is spent on settling lawsuits for discrimination in the workplace. And every year, 2 million people quit 
because they feel discriminated against in the work in the workplace. So this idea of a post-social society is just is being questioned. So what can we do? You know, we're going to be in the workforce in a couple years. We've been in school. A lot of us in here have gone through some type of teasing and bullying. What can we do to change this? I'm not, I'm not asking for world peace. I'm not asking for us to go out there and be Mahatma Gandhi. But what we can do is take this pyramid of hate and apply it to us. Imagine this. There's a six-year-old boy, um, and they just moved to a, a nice neighborhood, and some new people are coming in, minority groups are moving in, and his father's like, we can't have them in here. They're just going to start gang banging and selling drugs, and our, our, our neighborhood's going to go down the tube because they don't know how to keep anything. And so that little boy hears his father, and he's, it's his father, so of course he thinks it's true, and he doesn't think anything, anything different. The young boy turns to 16 years old, and now he's 16 talking with his friends, looking back at the neighborhood, saying, yeah, man, they shouldn't have came in here. They, they just tore down our neighborhood, and it's terrible because that's the kind of people they are. He's never talked to them, he's never met them, he's never even tried to explain because that's just what he was taught and he never challenged those stereotypes. And so now he's 36 and he has the opportunity to hire a white man or this minority, this minority man. And instead of, instead of hiring the minority man because of his bias, thinking that this group is always trying to get over, that they're troublesome and that they're um, belligerent, he automatically hires a white. This happens every day in the workplace. And so that's something that is totally, it's so relevant and I just want us to understand how this pyramid of hate, how we can take this and each day I just want you to look at it, start from the bottom and write a tally mark next to something that you may have done, something you may have thought when you saw someone walk across the street and how you didn't understand them, you gave them a look or you, a thought passed through your head. Mark a tally next to that box and the next day when you look back on what you did the day previous, just try and improve, try and improve, and try and talk to your friends. You hear them making jokes, some, something that's insensitive, like saying, that's so gay. Man, she jipped me out of that. These are people, groups of people that you're generalizing. And so challenge your friends and challenge yourself. And I think this pyramid of hate really is the, is the perfect tool for that challenge. Um, and if we all want to change the world, but really a lot of people are just afraid to make the change and step out of their comfort zone. So what I really encourage and charge you to do is to make that change, make that challenge, look at yourself in the mirror, and just check it.